Okay, so I was thinking of another idea of something that we could model. And I wanted it to be something a little different than what we've been doing in the previous lessons. So I was thinking that maybe something that would be perfectly round, maybe something cylindrical, and inside of this round cylindrical object would be some type of radial pattern. That way we could kind of change it up a little bit from what we've been doing and we could discuss using a couple of other different tools and modeling methods when working with sub D's. So I was looking around for different objects that are round and have a radial pattern. And a good example of an object that has a radial pattern and is round and cylindrical would be a rim to a car. So here is a picture of the wheel on my car. And I thought this would be a very good object to try and model. First of all, it is perfectly round and cylindrical. And second, it has a very nice radial pattern on the inside. So in this case, we have a five-spoked rim, and each one of these spokes has a hole here for the lug nut. Now there's a couple of tutorials online, and I think there is some other Cinema 4D training material where I think those users go into how to model a rim. But from what I've seen, I have been unable to find anyone that goes into great depths as far as how to model the rim plus the actual holes here for the lug nuts. Now I have seen a couple of videos where the user will use a bull to cut out the hole for the lug nut. And like I've said in previous lessons, I am not going to be going over the bull object. We're not even going to be using that just because of the mess that it creates. And this training series is all about how to properly model a hole into an object versus cheating and using the bull. So even though there are a few tutorials that show you how to model a rim, I'm just going to go ahead and make my own version of one. So this is what we're going to be modeling here. I've included this image uh, with the tutorial, and you can use this if you like, or if not, you can use your own image. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, if you do take your own image, uh, perhaps you have a rim on your own car that you would like to model, just be sure that your camera is level, straight, and parallel with the rim. You don't want to be taking any pictures from an angle. If you do that, you're going to run into problems when you try to line things up. Okay, so I went ahead and actually modeled this rim ahead of time and just gave it an orange color just to help it stand out, and that's what we're going to be creating. Now, all of this was modeled, uh, polygon modeling, using the hypernerve for the sub-Ds. Uh, no bulls were used for any of this. All of these holes here were modeled properly, so this is what we're going to be doing. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is go into a front view, and I want to get rid of this grid. So I'm going to go to Filter, Grid, and that's going to turn that off. The next thing I want to do is I want to pull up the directory where I have my image at of the rim, and I'm just going to take the image, and I'm going to click it and drag it into the viewport. And I'm going to hit Shift-V. It's going to bring up the attributes here for the viewport. I'm going to click on the back tab. And what I want to do is I want to line up this image using the offset and rotation values here to line this image up to where the very center of this forward cap here in the middle sits directly in the middle where this world origin is. And when I say world origin, what I mean is where this red horizontal line meets this green vertical line. That is the world origin right there in the very center. Now I also want to line up this top lug nut hole there and I want to line that up with this vertical green line. So I'm going to take the rotation value and I'm just going to spin that around and that's what I want to do. I want to line that up but you can see that this here is off so I need to adjust these parameters here in order just to get a very rough idea So this is not going to be 100% accurate. We just want to get a rough idea or a rough layout of where this is going to be at. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now we want to determine where we want to start modeling from. And some people might like to start here from the very center and start with an object here and then model out from there. Uh, other guys may like to start out here at the very outside of the rim, up here where the lip is, and then work their way inward. 
However, in this case, I would like to start at this top lug nut hole here. So instead of using a reference spline to use here for this lug nut hole, what we're going to do is start out with some geometry. So let's create a disk. And this disk needs to be changed for the orientation. I'm just going to put it to plus Z. And it's rather large at the moment, so we're going to take the outer radius down. And since we're in a front view, more than likely by default, you're not going to see your object like this because I've already changed my display. So what you need to do is go to display and just change it to ground shading and then change it to wireframe. So we want to pull this up to where it sits up here over the hole. Now you can see that that's still a little too large, so I'm going to take this down. And I think maybe we'll go one more, maybe a value of 18. All right, now you can see we've got way too many subdivisions and segments in there. So for the disk segments, I'm going to take that down to 1. And remember, we usually work with a value of 8 when dealing with the reference spline. So let's take the rotation segments down to a value of 8 as well. OK, so now we have the beginning shape of our geometry for the hole. So you can see now what we have is a bunch of triangles. And we need to get rid of those triangles. So a quick way to do that is to take this inner radius value and just take that value up. So now we have quads. All right, so this part here is going to be the inside hole where the extrusion is going to be made. And this here is going to be the outside. But notice that this is actually looking a little small because you can see part of the hole up here still. So this needs to be made a little larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the outer radius up till this point here on this outside radius of this disk meets this rounded lip here. You can see that there's a little bit of a contoured sharp lip that comes around here like that. And I want this point here on the outside of the disk to meet up with that. So I'm going to take the outer radius out until that meets that. So a value of 21 in this case will work. And then I want to take the inner radius up until it meets that outside hole. So you can see maybe we need to come down one more, maybe a value of 18. Okay, so now what we can do is take this disk and just make it editable. Now we're going to try to speed up our workflow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into polygon mode. And I'm going to select these polygons over here on the left hand side and I'm going to delete them. And then I'm going to use the symmetry object just to mirror those over. So now we only have to work here on the right hand side and everything over here will be mirrored. Now notice when we select these four polygons over here, they're a different color, they're blue. And that's telling us that the normals are reversed. Now we could just take this disk and just flip it around 180 degrees, or what we could do is with these four polygons selected, we could just hit U and then R to reverse those normals. Okay, so before we start making any extrusions to this, we need to make some adjustments to the points on the outside here. This point here, actually needs to come over a bit so that it sits in line with this edge. Because if we leave it where it's at, you'll notice that we're going to have a bit of a gap here between this contoured edge here and this outside radius of this disk. So what we need to do is we need to fill that in. Because if we were to go into edge mode and try to make an extrusion there to fill that in, we get this overlapping edge here, and we could weld this point here to this point here, but then we're left with a triangle, and that just starts to make more trouble for us. So instead of going through all of that, what we could do is just take this point here and just move it over to where it's in line with that lip. Now we can go back to edge mode. We can select this edge here. And what we could do is just extrude that up. Now we run into a little bit of a problem here. And if you're wondering, I am holding down control and then clicking and dragging to make that extrusion. Now we run into a little bit of a problem here because now we're creating this gap here in the very center. So what we could do to fix this really quick, one way to do it is just to take this point here 
and then come down here to the position value for x and just zero that out. And then we can take this point here and put it in place along that lip there. Take this point here and just bring it down to where it's even. Now we want to make sure that this is accurate across here and that all of these points have the same value. So what we'll do is we'll take this point here and we'll get its Y value. So we'll double click the Y value and choose copy. We'll click this middle point, double click, right click, choose paste, and then hit apply. Now we can go back to edge mode and now when we make an extrusion, now this will be straight and we won't get any gaps. So we'll hold down control, we'll just click and drag up to make an extrusion to about there. Make another one there, another one there, and another one there. Now we can go back to point mode and we can start lining these points up here on the outside with that lip. All right, so that will give us a basic shape to start with. And now what we can do is build off this corner down here. Now, this is where we run into a little bit of an issue. Not a big issue, but it's, it's an issue that more than likely you're going to come across when you're trying to model something in a radial pattern. What we want to do is we want to model this so that we only have to model one spoke. And then we can take that one spoke put it into a cloner object, and then the cloner object will clone in a radial pattern to give us the other four clones that we need to make up the five-spoke rim. So in order to get this to work properly, we have to determine exactly just how much of the spoke here we need to model. And we know that we need to split this whole thing into five segments because there are five spokes. So what I usually like to do to determine how much I need to model is just use a cloner object. So let's create a cloner object and we need to put something in the cloner object as a visual reference. So I'm going to choose a cylinder and we want to take the radius down because the radius is way too big right now. So maybe a value of one and then we'll take that cylinder, drop it into the cloner, go into the cloner and change the mode to radial and now we need to take the radius here and take this value up. Okay, so about there. Now you can see what's happening here is that we're getting a visual reference as to where all five of these spokes need to be. So in order to determine how much of the spoke we need to model, we need to determine exactly just how far we need to go with the modeling because if we were to model this part here as well as some of this over here and then we use the cloner object to clone it, we're going to get a lot of overlapping geometry. So what we need to do is determine the halfway point or the very center or middle between this cylinder here and this cylinder here. So what that means, and I'll just get the doodle tool to show you what I mean. And Let's get a bright color here for this. Okay, so we know we want to model this vertical spoke here. So what we need to do is determine the point between this cylinder here and this cylinder here. So the halfway point would be somewhere along there. So what that means is that since we're working in symmetry, all we really need to model is within this area here. And I'm just going to quickly scribble in. I know it's messy. So that is all we need to model right there. Because the symmetry object here for the disk is mirroring everything over to this side. And then once we're done with that, we can just use the cloner object to clone all of this 
five times all the way around. All right, so enough of this scribble. I'm going to close that out. All right, so we want to determine the middle value between this spoke here and this spoke here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cloner object, and I'm going to take the count and double it to 10. That way we now have a middle point here between this spoke and this spoke. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of the cylinder that's inside of this cloner, and I want to use something a little better than the cylinder, and I want to use a spline. So I'm going to choose the rectangle spline, but what I want to do is I want to take down the width to a value of zero and pull down the height a little bit, drop that into the cloner. Okay, so now we can take the cloner object and we can make that editable. That's going to give us our splines. And we can click on these splines. It looks like we're going to need to change the color for all of them. So let's just highlight all of these rectangle splines, go into display color. Let's change that to a red. And there we go. Okay, so what we want to do now is create a disk. And we already have one here, but we need to start with another one. So let's create a second disk. And we need to change the orientation on this one. And we'll take the disk segments down, and of course we need to take the radius down a little bit. Now, this is going to be a little different this time because when we created the first disk, we used a rotational segments value of 8, but that was just for the lug nut hole. And in this case, we want to use a completely different value because we want to make sure that the segments here, these lines for this disk, are lining up with the lines for our radial pattern here that we got with these red splines. Because we want this uh, disk to have even spaces. So if we take the disk and we bring down these rotation segments because we know we don't want to go up in value because right now 36 is way too much. So we know we want to come down. So what we'll do is we'll come down with this value. And what we're looking for is we want the lines or the edges in the disk to line up with these red reference splines. Now so far these values you can see that these are not lining up. So we'll go down again, we'll, let's try a, a value of 20 and now suddenly now you can see that is the value that we want. Now you can see that these red reference lines are perfectly in line with the segment lines on the disk. So we know a value of 20 is exactly what we want. So what we want to do is we want to line this up to give us the little bit of geometry that we need in order to fill in the gap between this center cap and the hole for the lug nut. You can see that this is where the hole starts here for the lug nut, and this is where the hole starts here for the center cap. Now notice that there's a little bit of distance in between there, so we need to create the geometry to fill that in. So what we'll do is we'll take the outer radius up, so I'm just going to take it to a value of about 34. You can see there's a little bit of a gap in there, that's okay. And then we'll take the inner radius, and we want to take that up, and I'll just give, make that a value of about 32. Okay, so now we have that, and now what we can do is just make this disk editable, go into polygon mode, and we can get rid of all of these polys along here. We can get rid of those too. So we only need this side right here. And we need to select those two and reverse those normals. Just hit UR to reverse them. We'll go into point mode and notice that there's a lot of points here that we need to clean up. So we'll just hit the optimize button just to clean those up. All right, so we're going to continue on with this in the next part.